Welcome back guys, we have a lot of stuff for Assassin's Creed Valhalla today. Insane amounts of iron and leather per hour. You can farm thousands of these materials almost effortlessly and I will show you all the methods how you can achieve them even at early level and even at later level when there is nothing more on the map. And I also have a flying paper glitch where these flying papers will never ever fly away. You can just go there, collect them, it's as simple as that. And since a lot of people are asking me recently how to get some certain runes, I will show you a trick how to get every rune you want very very easily. So stay tuned after all the farming is done and also check out the flying paper glitch and the rune trick. One method that is often overlooked by most farming guides is the chest farming because chests can give you significantly high amounts of resources. I've been sitting here on 7500 leather and over 4000 ore and that has a reason because I have almost looted every single chest in the game. These chests scale in their capacity. When you are in low level areas you get like 20, in East Anglia you get like 40, in Oxenfordshire it starts to get to be like 40, 50 or even 60, in Lincoln it will be around 80 and even in higher levels once you reach around level 200 areas then it will be 80, 90 or even 150 when you are here in Winchester and beyond. Especially the areas here in the north, all areas of North Humbria and even Lincolnshire will give you around 100 or more materials per chest. Also here in Wessex every small chest will give you around 100 or even up to 150 materials here in Hamptonshire. All these small chests are not connected to your level, to your character level, instead they are connected to the region they are located in. So when you go to a high level region and loot the small chests, you will always find like 150 50 or 170 oil or leather inside it. It is totally not worth going for the small iron pickups at low level if you haven't looted every chest on the map yet. Because these chests are the most efficient way to collect more materials, especially from the higher level areas. Only when you are really high level and there are no more chests, then the iron pickups really become useful because at higher level the iron pickups will also scale with your level and give you more materials. Once you have looted every good important chest in every high level area and you are still looking for leather, then there is a really good leather farming spot here south of Winchester in Hamptonshire. There is a whole wood full of wild boars which always gives you 40 to 50 leather for every one you kill. Just look at how many they are and that's just a small part of the whole horde which is roaming around in that wood and every piece of them will give you 40 to 50 leather when you beat them. I actually prefer to do the melee attacks because then I can use my skill to directly collect all the leather when I beat them but if you are not level 300 then I rather suggest you to use some range attacks because these boars after all will still have the level 340 from Hamptonshire and that's also the reason why they have so many leather because the leather of these wild animals actually scales with the level of the area as well. So in whatever region you beat high level wild animals you will always get an appropriate amount of leather out of it and since Hamptonshire is the highest level region having these forests with the wild boars is probably the best and most efficient leather farming spot in the game. But actually there are no animals dropping iron and that's a bit of a problem because there is no real big scaling effect for iron. But there are very good locations to farm some iron. And the best location in my opinion is the cistern tower here in Oxenfordshire because that's not only a low level area. There are over 50 iron pickups right in one chain one after another. And that is totally awesome because you can just start here on one end and then make your way all to the other end and pick up all that iron. Because my character level is 400 I get now a lot of iron here from every single iron pickup. I get like 3 iron pieces and each are like 5, 6 or 7 every time. So I get around 18 iron from every iron pickup here on the map which is really a lot. 
because when you're only on lower level you get like one or two at best and that makes you get only like five iron for every iron pickup. So it is much more efficient to go for all the chests in all the areas instead of farming the iron on the map. Only when you've looted every chest in every good high level location then you can start farming the iron on the map and it only is really efficient when you are high level. So once you reach level 300 and above then you can really start farming that iron on the map. Before that it's not really useful to do that. There are two more iron farming locations here in Hamptonshire, one at the fast travel point and the other one here at the secrets which can also give you a lot of additional iron. And on the location with the fast travel spot there can also be some patrols which give you additional titanium and tungsten every time you beat them. You can actually create a perfect farming loop which consists of the cistern tower in Oxenfordshire, then here the two rocks in Hamptonshire and then you go for the woods where all the wild boars are. Every time you do that they will have respawned already because you have been to Oxenfordshire in the meantime. And that's probably the best farming loop for iron and leather you can currently create. But only really do that when you are desperate and you have looted all the high level area small chests already. As promised I will now show you the flying paper glitch that actually involves the blinding rush ability which makes you totally invisible for every enemy and it also makes you invisible for these flying papers. Everything you have to do is climb up near the location of the flying paper and then activate your blinding rush. Blinding rush will stay active as long as you have stamina but it actually will drain your stamina bar really really fast. So you have to act really quickly to get that paper. Now we will activate blinding rush here with our A button and then you see it really drains your stamina very very fast but you can just go there collect the tattoo and you will be fine. Some of the tattoos are actually really hard to collect. The hardest ones are actually the ones which are only placed on a small pole and they cannot be reached from any other side. In that case you have to be really fast, you have to climb up very quickly before your stamina actually runs out. But it is really efficient, it does work on most of the flying papers. For example here is another one in Norwich and we can just approach it from the other side this time where we can easily activate it and we don't have to climb up the pole here in this case. So you have to find a way to easily reach that flying paper within the time frame where you still have your stamina. That's the trick and that's the difficulty. It may not work on every flying paper actually but it should work on most of them. You can find the blinding rush ability here in East Anglia in the ruined tower and the second level can be found in Wessex here in the ruined abbey. It is actually enough to get only level 1 for this ability to make this trick work. I was really disappointed that level 2 doesn't reduce the stamina cost so you have no benefit when you actually use level 2 of that ability. Since collecting all the flying papers also make you level up very quickly that is a very good timing to show you the rune reload trick. Many people are asking how to get the best runes, how to get all the runes for the builds I posted on my channel and that is very very easily. Once you level up you have to go to the merchant because the merchant resets every time you level up. Just make a manual save in his shop before you talk to him. This save allows you to reload the merchant stock if you don't like it because every time you talk to him the first time after leveling up he will have a new inventory. If you save after you have seen his inventory then you will also lock his inventory and it won't change anymore. So if you purchase something and of course you want to save that you purchased it then you will also save his inventory. And all the merchants inventories in the game are all the same. So they will all share the same inventory and then you have to level up again to do this trick again. So after you level up then make a new manual save and then with that manual save you can also reload the merchants again. You will actually find every rune at the merchant that is available in the game. Even every diamond rune will be on sale at the merchant. And if you are checking the merchant's inventory every time you level up anyway you should also make sure you buy out all the iron or the leather. That's really cheap and especially the titanium because titanium is a big problem. And also don't forget to buy the scroll of knowledge that will help you level up even faster giving you an additional level for every level you level up.
And if you don't have enough money to buy all the scrolls of knowledge, to buy all the titanium, iron ore and whatever, then simply sell all your runes which you have duplicated with the rune duplication. The rune duplication is also very important because you only have to collect one melee attack rune, one great damage rune or one whatever rune and then you can duplicate them. In order to duplicate the runes from the merchant you only need a duplicate item in your inventory. For example the Huntsman armor or the Gologach armor these can occur multiple times throughout the game. Or you choose the Mark of Solbo, that can be bought at settlement level 6 from the merchant. Simply put the runes you want to duplicate on that bow or on that armor item and then you will see that the duplicate item will also have the same rune. Select the duplicate, go into the rune menu of the duplicate bow and socket and unsocket some random runes to push out these runes and get them added to your inventory. Then simply equip the normal one and then the duplicate one will have new runes which you can unsocket. It will automatically fill with the same runes as the original Mark of Soul bow and you can just push out the duplicate runes on the duplicate item every time you do that. This way you will get enough runes to fill your build with all the good runes like more melee damage, the great life runes, great attack runes or whatever you prefer. And even if you don't need all the duplicate runes then simply sell them for more money to get more iron, to get more leather, more titanium and golds of knowledge. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.